I just want to thank Cheryl Lee Ralph again because she reminded me of something um, that we we totally need to um, pay attention to people's uh, their legacy. You know, Shirley Ralph was able to speak the way she spoke yesterday because she's been through some things. She's done some things. And what you heard yesterday was wisdom, wisdom rooted in knowledge, wisdom rooted in experience. And I feel like we have a nation that doesn't respect wisdom and they don't respect knowledge. Uh, we have yesterday also, we had Samara Lynn on who was talking about journalism. And she reminded me again that just because you have a degree in journalism doesn't make you a journalist. Just because you've read some books doesn't make you a, doesn't mean that you have the, the tertiary knowledge to sit in that seat. And we have microwave journalists and microwave talent, microwave presidents, people who step into positions that they're ill-equipped for, but that's our fault because we placed them there. We put people on pedestals who do not deserve to be there. We put people on pedestals who do not deserve to be there. I can't tell you how often I've had people, Karen, you should run for office. No, I should not run for office. That is not my calling. But just because I said some nice things on the radio or because I think in a way that makes you feel like I know what I would be doing, politicians, that's a particular kind of thing. That is a specific kind of job that people need to prepare for. I think lawyers make good politicians, but lawyers who have been, if we if look at the trajectory of Barack Obama, community activist or community organizer. So he got into the community to find out what they wanted. He helped them organize to get the things that they wanted because that's what government does. Government works for the people to get the things that they want. But many of us are armchair uh, politicians who think, oh, because I have some good ideas or people like me, it's a popularity contest. No, it is a, I know how to get things done for people job being in Congress, being state legislators, the president, you have to know what to do to be in that position. And we, the people who elect people, we can't just elect people because we like them. We shouldn't just be electing people because they make us feel good or they make us feel smart or they make us, we, we just, we like how old they, they had a good quip on, on social media. So that makes them valid to be president, to lead your city, to be your mayor. No. And I'm thinking about it as it relates to this platform. You know, I, I've heard several people say to me in relationship to the murder of Mr. Arbery, when I said that the, the people who killed him, they allegedly did it. Karen, we saw the video. It's not alleged. No, it's alleged because I'm on a public platform. I'm on a national platform that uh, I don't own and control from that standpoint. So I'm mindful of the things that I can and cannot do and say on these airwaves. Uh, it's like having a driver's license. That is an agreement. When you get that license, you have signed on to following traffic laws and rules. The speed limit is 55, 65, or 70 on the highway, 35, 25 locally. You have agreed to follow. I'm going to pass on the right. I'm going to give people the right of way. You took a test. They didn't just give you a license unless they did. But that license comes with certain responsibilities, right? And you want that license, right? You don't, you don't want them to take that license away from you. So you stay within those parameters and it doesn't make you a sellout. It makes you someone who recognizes that there are rules of engagement for every single thing that you do. When you go on your job, there are things, there's a certain way that you dress. There's a certain way that you comport yourself. Even in the classroom setting, there are rules of engagement. And to, to, to think that there shouldn't be is why we got here. To think that there should not be laws and rules around behavior. Let me just tell you, if I wasn't on Sirius XM, I still would say alleged because I'm trained that way. As a journalist, until someone's convicted, it's alleged. And there should be rules and parameters that we guide ourselves under. Or else we have complete and total chaos. Which is what it kind of looks like now. Because there are no rules of engagement. We, we give people, <laughs> we buy books from people who don't read. We do. We buy books from people who don't read, who have not done any scholarship because we like them. We take advice from people who on relationships who have been divorced three or four times. Now that might be make them an expert because they've been divorced so many times. But really, like what's their experience and wisdom that can give you some insight? Yes, I believe you chew up the meat and spit out the bones. You can learn from a donkey. But I think we need to be more discriminating. And as it relates to this show, uh, I don't need you to call up just to give your opinion. There's a lot of opinions out there. This show is rooted on adding value to the lives of the people who are listening. 
So even as a caller, when you dial 866-801-8255 and call up, ask yourself, am I adding to the conversation? Yesterday, we were talking about the deaths in the Kojic uh, church and a gentleman called up to give insight because he's part of the church. And it was perfect because there are things that I don't know and I rely on this vast family of ours to bring things to the, to the family that is nourishing, that will give us more insight and wisdom, that will carry the story forward. Now, there are certain stories where we just need to vent, like the killing of Mr. Arbery. <laughs> yes, we need to vent. But for the most part, you know, this is a purpose-driven show. It's really about, you know, empowerment. So if you're calling up, and, and this goes beyond the calling, right? If you're following someone who has not done anything, has not built anything, they haven't, there's no works in their own lives to demonstrate that they can actually lead you. Why are you following them? There are whole organizations that have done absolutely nothing to further the cause in our community. And you're following, caping for, out there crusading for, why? Because people have said some nice swift things that make you feel good and they're, and they're able to string together some sentences that make you feel good. Listen, listen. This has to be a do something existence and there should be receipts and there should be evidence that you deserve to be in that position, whether we're talking about teachers and on these airwaves, I'm not a journalist. So let me just be clear. I do have a background, but I consider myself more of a teacher and a learner. I'm sitting here learning. I invite people on who can teach me. I'm even committed and I wish that I had paid more attention in school because I didn't. Because like a lot of people, I was there for the wrong reasons. I was there to get a degree so I can move on with my life. But I wasn't in school to learn, which is what you're there to do, right? And I wish I could do it over. But I spent my entire adult life trying to make up for what I didn't do in the classroom when I was 18, 19, and 20 years old. And I'm now spending my Saturdays talking with Dr. Greg Carr because there are things I need to know. And this man has done the scholarship has done the scholarly work. And so when I ask him a question, I know that he's not just going to tell me something out of his dingleberries. That man is going to pull a book off of his shelf. He's going to read from that book. He's going to tell me the history, the etymology. Like we're going to learn something. And that's what I think, you know, needs to happen. If we're going to talk about building our community and getting to a place of, of, of empowerment, uh, first of all, a lot of us are going to have to, to slow down, back up, and, and do some homework. And I'm not... Listen, uh, I was talking with another friend of mine who's in academia and, and kids are going to college right now, clout chasing, you know, how is this going to help me in my career? You know, not, not going to school to learn. School's about, you know, iron sharpening iron. It's really about building on, on your knowledge base and foundation. It's not about, is this going to lead me to, to this job in this corporation? But we see people cheat and lie and steal to get in to these fancy schools so that they can get on, on their, on their grind and they don't add anything to society. And so now we have a whole Wall Street class of people with no morals and values. We have a whole political class with people with no morals and values. And unfortunately, we have a whole community of people that are okay with folks lying, stealing, cheating, and, and they think it's okay. So I'm just, I'm, I'm just saying enough. And if I can model that on these three hours, Monday through Friday, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna bring the, the fire, with the guests that we have and I'm about building. And if you're not, this may not be the show or the channel for you. And that's fine. There's plenty of things out there for you. But if you really are about building, ask yourself the people that I'm following, what have they built? What have they done? You know, a tree by the fruit that it bears. I can't say that enough. You know, a tree by the fruit that it bears. What kind of fruit are these people delivering? <laughs>